Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about a topic that is asked all the time. So often you'll be going through your food diary and adding in items as you go throughout the day. Often, just by accident, you might select a different food. This time it might be displayed as a cooked food rather than the raw food, which you may usually use to track. You'll see a complete discrepancy with the actual macros that are listed. I've done this myself. I know there are a couple of products that I use as my go-tos. For example, like grilled chicken breast. There's one in my app that I'll look at and it tells me a certain amount of carbohydrate, fat and protein. and one day I looked down like, eh, I picked the wrong one. It had really different macronutrients. So this might be something that's happened to you. So hopefully you can relate to this scenario and I'll go through and explain to you why we should or shouldn't be doing it a certain way. So all foods have different moisture contents. So this affects things like the taste, the texture, the flavor. It also affects things like the shelf life and how perishable a food is. But today I wanna to talk to you about the moisture content in the perspective of how it affects a food's overall weight. So let's start off by having a look at the moisture content of certain foods. And we'll start with the most obvious one, which is water. So water is obviously 100% water. So some other uh, beverages such as diet soda, something I'm a big fan of, tonic water, soda water, sparkling water, all of these are basically 100% water. If we move into some more uh, perishable foods, let's think about some fruits and vegetables. We're thinking watermelon, strawberries, cantaloupe, cabbage, lettuce, celery. All of these foods have about 90 to 99% uh, moisture content. Now, as we move down that list, we start to move into the realm of foods like pasta, ground beef, chicken, maybe some feta cheeses, maybe some legumes. Now, these foods have a moisture content anywhere between, say, 40 to 70%. Now, at the very bottom of that list, we're looking at things that are basically 100% fat. So margarine, oils, spreads, that type of food. And of course, the cooking method we use to actually cook these foods dictates the overall moisture content at the end of cooking. So whether you bake an item, whether you grill, barbecue, through to things like steaming and boiling, it drastically changes how much the food weighs after cooking. So we'll start by looking at when you apply heat to a food. If you're cooking something in the oven or you're grilling, the food is going to weigh less at the end because there is evaporation of water, there's evaporation of moisture. On the contrary, if you are uh, boiling foods or steaming foods, you're adding water. So the end product when you cook is going to weigh more. So let's start with an example. Let's say you are grilling your chicken. It starts off as 100 grams of chicken breast in the raw state and that probably has around 22 grams of protein. When you finish cooking it probably weighs around 70 grams and a general rule of thumb is that when you cook something you have about 30% moisture loss so 100 grams down to 70 grams there's your 30%. Now just because it weighs less doesn't mean that the nutrition profile of the chicken has magically changed. It still has the exact same macronutrients profile. At 100 grams raw weight, it contains about 22 grams of protein, but at 70 grams cooked weight, it still has 22 grams of protein. So I think that's something that a lot of people tend to become confused about when it comes to tracking or logging their food either raw or cooked. Let's say your portion size was a little bit bigger and you ended up eating 100 grams of cooked chicken breast. Now, that's going to have somewhere around 29 grams of protein. But if we apply that 30% rule, then it started off as probably around 143 grams. They both still have 29 grams of protein but now that you've cooked it, it just weighs a little bit less due to that loss of moisture. So how does this small discrepancy actually affect your day-to-day -day tracking and your compliance to your macro targets? Well, let's say your daily protein target was 145 grams and you have three meals. Each of those meals contains some chicken, but you log that as 100 grams of raw chicken for each of those meals. That would equate to 22 grams of protein if you logged it as the raw state. But if you actually ate 100 grams of cooked chicken, well, that cooked chicken actually has 29 grams of protein and you're drastically under tracking your macros. 
So if it was just one meal, it's only a five gram difference in protein. But when you start to accrue and combine these, those errors do start to add up. So what if you're somebody that has been logging things incorrectly? Well, don't stress, it's not the end of the world. So here's a couple of things that you can do. Hopefully you've been consistently tracking it incorrectly and that you haven't been bouncing around between the cooked form and the raw form. Otherwise, if you've been doing that, then each day that you track, you've probably been a little bit off your actual compliance. Here's what you can do to rectify it. If you have been consistently tracking it incorrectly and you've been logging it as, say, the raw form, which would mean that you're actually underestimating the amount of protein that you were consuming, what you might like to do is work out what you have been consuming and then make that your new target and then track from there, depending on what your goals were. If you are undertaking a fat loss diet and your targets were 145 grams per day and you've actually been under eating, well, now probably just bring your protein targets down and then move forwards and track consistently thereafter. What I recommend that you do is track the food how you are eating it. So if you're eating chicken cooked, which you should be, track it as cooked chicken so that you're getting the macronutrient profile correct. So the same rule applies if you're boiling your vegetables. 30% increase in moisture if you're cooking your vegetables al dente. If you have 200 grams of broccoli, hopefully you can relate to broccoli, when you cook it, that 200 grams of raw broccoli now weighs about 260 grams. So in the raw state, broccoli probably has around six grams of protein, 10 grams of carbohydrates. If you tracked it as 260 grams of broccoli, well then you'd be overestimating the amount of carbohydrates and you would actually be over your daily targets. So again, make sure that you're tracking the food how you're actually eating it. If it's cooked chicken, log it as cooked chicken. If it's raw veggies, log it as raw veggies. And that way you're not making any mistakes. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any topics that you want me to talk about, please leave a comment below. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about this, why don't you check out our books online at the BioLane store. Links are in the description below.